You're watching the Team Nerd Tech Show with your hosts, Tim Gillen and Ruthie Kierlin. Well, hello, fellow small biz nerds. Tim Gillen here, Terrapin Networks, Traverse City, Michigan. And I welcome you once again to the Team Nerd Tech Show, our weekly tech digest of all things small business. And this week, still, we'll be talking about the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, coronavirus. We record these a few days before they air on WTCM News Talk 580 in Traverse City, Michigan. And then right after that, they are out to all the podcasts and uh, iTunes and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Stitcher and all those, as well as on YouTube. And uh, so you might be hearing this uh, with a couple days old news, but it's not going to be anything that's, that's too out of whack, we hope. And so we want to continue our discussion that we started last week uh, about what this means for small companies and what it's like to have your staff working from home or working from remote locations. So let me introduce, as I do every week, our producer and my co-host and my daughter from Queens, New York, Ruthie Kerwin. Hello, Ruthie. Hello there, Tim. Hello. How are you this week? Good. Well, good. Kind of an interesting week. It is definitely an interesting week. And I'm going to add a caveat since we are working from home. And like we normally work from home, we record these from our home offices, only normally my kids are in school. And so <laughs> there's a chance we might hear some uh, kids blippy, which is a TV show they love in the background, <laughs> or uh, yelling, fighting. So all of that might be making a cameo and in I apologize ahead of time. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. They're, of course, my grandchildren, so that's really okay. Yeah, but, yeah, they're yeah. okay with you. <laughs> but but more than that, this is, and I don't think it's a new normal, uh, but in some ways it's going to be a new normal that about our staffs working from home. Now, as Ruthie mentioned, we've been doing this show for over a year now, and we've always recorded them when Ruthie's in Queens and I'm here in Traverse City, which is in northern lower Michigan. The, the northern part of the lower peninsula of Michigan. And uh, we do them, uh, we use, we happen to use right now a product called Zoom, which is a video conferencing uh, app. And then we record it and get just the video off it and get just the, the audio off it and break it all out to kind of put the show together. So this is not uncommon. We've had several staff meetings uh, myself this week with our team who largely works remote. Our company, Terrapin Networks, in Traverse City, Michigan, we largely work remote for our customers anyway. We go on site when needed, but we have set ourselves up to be able to work remote for many years now, as is not uncommon for people who do what we do. But we've set up a lot of very secure ways for us to be able to uh, connect into your network uh, securely and take care of everything from firewalls and servers and backups and doing user support when something doesn't print or an app doesn't work, or there needs to be an upgrade on an app. And we've set our customers up for a long time to be able to do that, even when their staff is working remotely. Now, sometimes it's from a branch office. Sometimes it's a staff person that might uh, work on the road and, and go on site to their customers. So we have the protection for the device, meaning their laptop, for example, uh, follow the device around. By that, I mean it, the laptop is protected, antivirus, content filtering, firewall type stuff, whether it's inside the office building or outside the office building. So going on board with what we talked about last week a little bit about uh, for small business owners, we need to kind of start getting this into our head that this is going to be a little more common uh, one of the things that we think about is you want to be sure that the, that your device is protected even when your staff member is not in your physical building. How do you mean protected? Like what's, well, yeah, when you so, say protected, what does that encompass? Well, if you think about it, your staff members out there and they're they're working one of two ways. Let's say that they're working from home. They're going to be connecting into whatever application your company uses that's already in the cloud. They're going to be connecting into that, which they'll be using their home internet connection to do that, which may or may not be very secure. You may have a wide open wireless there for when your kids have friends over that can make some exposure to that device when it's inside the building. So you can put things on the laptop. When I say device, in this case, I mean laptop. Let's just, let's just think of it that way, at least. There's a... Uh, th uh, 
there's ways you can set up that laptop so that it's still protected, even though it might be on a funky home wireless. That these are VPNs that go out to the internet as opposed to a VPN that goes back to your company building. Those are two different VPNs and it gets kind of confusing. And that's where you might need someone like us to kind of help you through it. So you use something like NordVPN or IP Vanish. We happen to like IP Vanish a lot. There's a variety of Tunnel Bear. There's a variety of, of VPN services you can buy so that when you're on a wireless connection, doing stuff on the internet, you're protected. So you're and, recommending that every that everyone who has been sending their employees home or <clears throat> is looking to set up some sort of a work from home experience for their employees, that they make sure that they have a VPN set yes. up for when they're doing all work. Yes. Okay. So, and, and in many cases, in most cases, two levels of VPN. Okay. So the one VPN is just what's running. So whenever you're on the internet is protected. And where that really matters is when you're on a wireless connection. That's when it really matters. But it can matter at home if you have a, if you have a wireless that's been set up. Let's say you plug your, your laptop into the back of the modem at home. Mm -hmm. But if it's on the same network, as we call it, as the wireless one, the kids on the iPads uh, in the house or on their laptop or gamer laptop, they might bring home, phone, whatever it might be, would also be able to sniff what's going on there. And as a business owner, that's a no-no. Yeah, that's definitely something I haven't thought about because yeah. I'm not used to working while they're also here and using right. their own devices. Right. So, so that matters. So yeah, okay. that's where a VPN in that mindset can protect the traffic that goes in and out of that laptop out okay. to the internet. Again, while you're connecting into, it might be G Suite if you're using Google Apps for all of your email, that actually mm -hmm. matters because you might have G Drive out there and all that kind of thing where you're keeping files out there. But it also just might be a, 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 a hosted service that you use uh, for your design or accounting, QuickBooks Online, all those kind of things, or a, a CRM package, a customer relationship management package uh, where that's all hosted, where you might do service tickets, you might do scheduling for your staff, all that kind of thing. Okay. Service Bridge is one of those common um, cloud apps for and that. And you say that, that that should all be protected by a VPN. You should have, if Except your staff's going to work VPN. from home, you want to have some kind of a VPN there. That's a smart play. Now, here's the other way that they work from home is they connect back into the company network, into your actual office building. And commonly... A staff when they're working, uh, especially clerical staff and design staff, that kind of thing, uh, are working from a desktop inside your building. And so a real common thing that we'll set up is a VPN that connects to the network, and then they're able to remote into that actual workstation. So you're sitting at home on your laptop, and you're able to virtually be sitting at your desk in the office building working off that computer. Very common. And that's the, that's maybe the most common way that small businesses use uh, external connections like that. And that's where the, uh, you want a VPN into your, into your company network. Now that should be a VPN into the firewall, into the firewall device. And so depending on what your tech team has put together, uh, we use a particular one that we use for all of our customers and includes any VPN licensing and so we set up VPN clients on the laptop for you to remote in from home into the office and right into your desktop very securely. You can print in the office. You can print back at the house. We set it up to do any number of ways. And you can just conduct business like you're sitting at your chair. And for a lot of people, that's really a, a very effective way to use it. Now, that if you work strictly off a laptop or if you move around a lot anyway, that's a little bit different. Okay. But it, and so though- and By moving like, around, sorry, you, you mean like going out in the field as, as an employee, work, working one-on-one well, -on -one as a vendor so with customers? Some, yeah, so some staff, if you do AP or you're the bookkeeper, you basically sit at a desk. Yeah, you're in say, one location the whole time. At one location, yeah. that's all you ever work at. So if you want to work from home for a temporary period of time, Sometimes it's maternity leave. Sometimes you've been injured. Sometimes yeah. you're on vacation. Sometimes there's but you a global to, pandemic and everybody and has to work from home. Sometimes there's a global pandemic. And so exactly. So you want to be able to remote into your desktop for just sporadic periods of time. It's not something that you do all the time because normally yeah. you're working at your desk and working off your computer at your desk. So this is a way for you to be virtually sitting at your computer at your desk while being home or at a hotel or at a resort or a cabin that you might work from 
that kind of thing, which is another common way that we see it, especially with executives. Okay. They might have a cabin or, or uh, uh, maybe not just executives, but a, a key personnel, maybe the bookkeeper, maybe your accountant has a few people that he or she is an accountant for, any number of things where that might be appropriate. And so to be able to virtually be able to sit at your desk is one way of doing that. And, and for a small company, it's maybe the most common. Now, Let's think about a staff who's not a person who sits at a desk all day, like a bookkeeper or a, a CFO or an a accounts payable person might, or even a, a human resources person might, but by nature works at, at, at different locations, at sales uh, conferences, at yeah. tech conferences, industry events, those kind yeah. of things. And they may work all the time off a laptop and, and may work from with their laptop plugged into a docking station and use it like a desktop when they're at their office. They've got a full-size monitor, full-size keyboard, but then half their time or whatever it might be, they spend out and about working on their laptop. That's a little bit different set of circumstances because they pick up their laptop and take it with them. There's no desktop for them to remote into. There's no chair for them to virtually sit at. So how is that different when you have that sort of a VPN? You may not be log- plugging in directly to your actual modem, but if you've got a VPN, does that secure you in the same way that somebody working from home who's yes. not moving around would be? Yeah, it can. So always, Again, it it uh-huh. always comes back to a VPN, basically. Well, in yeah, this instance. In this instance, yes. This ability to be, to be able to work from home, the most common thing, the most secure thing right now is to have some kind of VPN in the mix, virtual private network. It scrambles your traffic, your the data that you're sending and receiving from your laptop, workstation, whatever, and it scrambles it inside the internet so that it's not uh, available for someone to be able to see that traffic. And now if you're somebody who's trying to get set up kind of on your own to work from home, to bring your job back to your house while you're you know stuck inside for, like we said, a global pandemic, would just downloading that VPN software and installing it on your computer be enough? Or should you really be working with whoever your tech team is at work in order to have that double layered VPN that you spoke about? Like, is it, can it be enough just to download all the software on your computer of a, of say express VPN or IP vanish? Well, it can be as long as everything you're doing is out in the cloud. So okay. I, you know, okay. th- again, all that IP vanish, or NordVPN or ExpressVPN or any of these, all that they are good for is for you, protecting you as you go to a website. Got it. All right. Not, so if not the, the actual working on your company server. Not anything back in your company server. It has no okay. relationship with okay. anything back there. Keep that in mind. Now, you may you may set up stuff at your company office to where everything is hosted on a, on a website. Okay. Which can be done. It's usually overkill for a small business. That's That's awfully rare because that takes a fair amount of setup. It's not something you do short term. So we don't, we wouldn't see that in a smaller company, 10, 20 users. You're not going to see that. That's, that's not the way you're going to generally want to set that up. So you're going to have, and it's not a double layer VPN. There's, they're two separate VPNs. So don't think of this as one VPN. Then we put another one on top and make it even more secure. That's not what we're doing. Okay. We've got pipes going in two different directions. You want to think of it maybe that way. Oh, One pipe's okay. going out to a browser, out to the out to a website. Might be G Suite, might be Service Bridge, might be QuickBooks Online. Uh-huh. Has nothing to do with your with your office building, and in your main office, you have another connection. Then a separate one that connects you into your main office building, and now you're connecting to that physical building. You're taking that network that's inside your physical office building, and you're extending it using the internet out to that person sitting at home as opposed to any web browser off a phone, iPad, laptop can get you on a QuickBooks online or service bridge online, those kind of things. So they're, okay. they're going two different directions. Got it. That, 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 that analogy makes it makes a lot more sense. Two okay. different pipes, because I was thinking yeah. about it as something stacked, but if it's right. two different things going two different directions, two different flows yeah. of information, yeah. that makes a lot more sense as so to what we'll, you want to be setting yeah, up. Well, think of the information superhighway. You've got a two lane run that roads out to the browser and a two lane road that runs back to your office and they're, they're two kind of separate roads. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good way to put it. Well, the next thing I wanted to speak with you about, um, so we're covering VPNs, talking about people working from home. We have a great past, we have a couple past episodes that we've spoken about with working from home. Last 
episode that we released, um, episode number 56, we spoke about how companies need to be sort of starting to shift their way of thinking and making sure that they're getting it set up in the long term and using these types of VPNs. We also have a past episode about working from home just in general that we released back in 2019, long before any of this crazy stuff with COVID-19 came out, about how you can suddenly bring things home. What happens if a if a key employee, your CFO, your the person who handles all the accounting in your company, breaks their leg? Yeah, and they got to work from home. Some sort of a major life change. All it's of a some sudden, some sort of a major life change. All of a sudden, uh, or get some uh, diagnosis of sickness, and they need to stay home. So maybe not like a pandemic, but it's just them. What do we do as the business owner? What can we do quickly to get so that they can work from home? Because this comes up to us as a fair amount. We're the tech team for these small offices that we take care of. And hey, all of a sudden, Mary Beth or Jim has to be able to work from their mom is sick. They got to take care of them. Any number of things needs to be able to work from home for a while. Let's get that set up. I also want to bring up this other thing that you and I had spoken about on our Twitter profile the t- uh, of Terrapin.tech. That's us on Twitter, Terrapin, D-O-T-T-E-C-H. You shared two really fascinating threads, I thought, that took all of the information that we're being being given right now about what's happening with the coronavirus and the task force and suppression and isolation and flattening the curve. And it broke down all of, um, it broke it down in a very easy to read digestible way that helped yeah. me be like, oh, okay, I see now. Like I, yeah. I, I kind of understand. So talk me through two of these different threads. We have one from a guy called Jeremy C. Young. Can you start with that one? Yeah. And the Jeremy C. He was sharing a thread uh, from the Imperial College in the UK. And they did a really interesting breakdown. Again, we're just just to warn everybody, and I hope this is okay. And mm-hmm. if it's not, sorry, this is going to be science based. This is not political in nature, and it's not conspiracy in nature or any of those things that are floating around out there. And by the time some of you hear this, because not, uh, as I noted earlier, we record these a few days before they first uh, are are released uh, live, is uh, uh, this notion of what we're doing here with this. Um, social distancing and staying home and all this is all uh, in the service of flattening the curve that this particular virus, this coronavirus of which there's been many flavors of coronavirus. It's something that's been out in our, in our uh, human population forever. Uh, This most current one, this COVID-19 as uh, well, you, you get the, you get the disease COVID-19 which is a really bad flu, and uh, that's a simplistic way of saying very it. Simplistic, yeah. Very it's simplistic, yeah. It's more serious than the flu, saying, but It's still. more serious than a regular flu, but it's that mm-hmm. kind of thing, very respiratory in nature. That's yes. what causes the problems. And uh, um, uh, the idea here is that as this infection spreads, and it's, it, this particular one has a very high contagious factor, re- referred to as the r naught factor, r naught. you've heard it called, and that's true in all these kind of infectious diseases. And this looks like it has one that's as high as R2.5, which is actually quite high. What that means is regular flu has one that's less than R.1. And what R.1 would be is that if I'm infected and I'm working, I'm, I'm mingling around, the, if I'm carrying on my normal life, I'm generally going to infect one other person. If it's R2.5, if I'm infected, even if I'm not sick, but if I'm infected, and I mingle around my normal life, I will uh, uh, infect as many as 2.5 other people. Wow. That's considered extremely high. Yeah. Because that exponentially grows. Then those, then yeah, that, exactly. Then that person and who gets it, those two and a half people infect two and a half, infect two and a half. So the the exponential, and it's not linear. One a, An R1 tends to be linear. It just kind of moves straight across. Mm-hmm. Uh, R2.5 becomes an exponential. And that's what happens. We get a lot of infection real quick. Another interesting thing or that's... that's um, been strange about this, uh, what what turns into COVID-19 is that it has a very long incubation period. Normal flu has a one to five days, tops one to four days with normal seasonal flu. By the time you get infected, by the time the germs have gotten on your hands and you rubbed your eyes and now it's inside you, uh, by the time you start showing symptoms, it's four or five days. So right away, you know you're sick. You'll start to, you'll stay home because you're, you're mm-hmm. dealing with the illness. Well, in this the, the coronavirus here that brings on COVID-19, it can be as long as 14 days from what we can tell at this point. Which is a lot of people you could potentially be infecting. Without without knowing that you are, exactly. and it's all 2.5. So you start thinking of these Jeez. exponential things, it really starts to spread. That's what's causing the issue. The, the, uh, 
the morbidity, right? The, the how difficult this is for a certain group of people is a big part of it. So 80% of us, according to both these threads, and this is what's in this imperial thing, 80% are not going to have, uh, we'll get it, we'll get what seems like fairly normal flu. Another 15 to 18% are going to have it kind of bad, but they're still going to be able to recover from it. Another 5% to 8% are it's going to be really bad for and that's what we're actually protecting against and so what we know of the the groups that are more at risk of this are people with some kind of underlying condition that's lung based which would be pulmonary uh, or some kind of uh, immune suppression issues and then the elderly which by nature of their advanced age and by elderly i'm talking 80 years old and up not so much 60 and 70 unless you've got one of these underlying conditions it's rare for someone who's in their late 80s to not have one of these underlying conditions. Mm -hmm. That's where that happens. Your lungs aren't as strong when you're 87 as they are when you're 67 or certainly are where they are when you're 47 or 27 and work your way down. So it's not having a very high effect on, on real young kids. It's not that it's never happening, but rarely the H1N1 of, a, of 2009 was really tough on young people. This one's kind of the opposite because it's more lung-based. That's more pulmonary and immune-based. That's why. So the idea here is, is that by staying home and by not mingling with each other, we will slow down the spread. And that means that the hospital system can keep up with it. That's what this is all about. It's not going to make it go away any quicker. It's going to still be around for the next several years, probably. Is it, well, it's, it's, it's out there now. So we'll have a vaccine for it eventually. They're saying as long as 18 months, it looks like it could be a lot less than that. We're also finding a lot of treatments for it right now that really seem to, to actually make a real effect now. We'll know more about this as time goes on. But uh, as, and by time goes on, I mean the next few months, this chloroquine, uh, some, of these, some of these drugs are used for malaria, mm -hmm. oddly enough, because they attack these small organisms, that's what they do. Uh, are a good way to mitigate when you first get infected, that you won't have symptoms that are so bad. And this could also be the same for the elderly and people who have these other underlying conditions that could cause uh, complications. Uh, also, there's a, a there, we're going to share a thing from that, uh, well, we saw it out actually on Fox News. Um, and by that, I mean to say that Dave Kennedy is the second thread we're going to spread. Dave Kennedy is an ethical hacker. He's a former Marine, and uh, or I guess they're, you're never a former Marine. Yeah, you're always, once a Marine, always a Marine. <laughs> once a Marine, yeah. always a Marine. But anyway, he's a Marine, uh, a retired Marine, I guess, um, uh, who is an ethical hacker, a white hat hacker, as we call him, meaning that he uh, actually understands computer security at a very high level and helps companies protect themselves from that. And he shared, he had a nice uh, follow-up to this uh, Imperial College uh, thread that Jeremy Young had out there. And Dave Kennedy also shared a thread from Fox News where this, uh, this uh, Dr. Jacob Glanville, who has a company or a laboratory called Distributed Bio, they're looking at, and this might be kind of old news by the time you hear this, of a way that they're going to be able to neutralize the, uh, the antibodies in, that are causing the problem. So it won't be so much a vaccine where you build a resistance inside your body to fight it off. Yeah. It's going to neutralize the problems that the, that the germs are causing. That's fascinating. Which is really fascinating. So a lot of this is moving very quickly. Um, I'm more of the, uh, from what I can see from the science, uh, Elon Musk, uh, who's been some, to some degree downplaying this, but I don't think he completely is. And I uh, actually shared a tweet of his uh, yesterday where he's, he seems to think that it's all going to flatten out by early, mid-April. Let's that hope. We'll, Jeez, that I hope we'll, Elon Musk is right. Yeah, I hope Elon Musk is right. And by that, not that it's going to go away, but of that we'll, we'll get ahead of it, that the exponential rise of it will be uh, will be kind of ahead of that curve. We will have flattened the curve enough. And that he tends to think, which I do too, we'll have some of these, uh, that that the, the human uh, intervention stuff will really start to take effect. That it might take this... 12 to 18 months to have a full vaccine where you can take a shot, mm -hmm. you can build in an antibodies, but there, there'll be a certain amount of herd immunity because this will have been floated out there. This 80% of people who will get this, but won't have serious uh, complications from it, will be able to build up their own antibodies. That's going to become their vaccine. From what we can tell from this COVID-19 so far is that we do build up the same kind of antibodies as we do with normal flu. Plus the weather's getting warmer here in the Northern hemisphere 
that's also by what we can tell, that's going to help. They have not had it as strongly in the Southern Hemisphere, which of course is moving into their colder weather anyway, but we have not had it as strongly in the Southern Hemisphere yet that we can see. It's primarily, if you look at all the maps, primarily the big upgrades cold, cold weather. are in the Northern Hemisphere yeah. where we're still in cold weather. So the weather is starting to get warm. The the angle of the earth with respect to the sun is changing for those of us in the northern hemisphere so the warmer weather is coming that generally helps with these kinds of flus we're not completely sure of this one yet but from what we can tell it is so we have a couple of interesting things hopefully it's not old news hopefully it'll still be interesting to you uh, but check out these there's some good threads they if really like do the break sun, it down yeah and it's, it's very nerdy digestible. stuff it is like but it, yeah it's nerdy but you know we always joke that like you're the nerd and i'm the normal person <laughs> for a normal person like me reading these two threads that we tweeted out here on the uh terrapin.tech that we retweeted excuse me yeah. really break down the process of, of of where we are as a country right now what's happening with medical with the medical aspect of it and what's moving forward it's, it's yeah. just makes it's it's easy to understand in this what are the capacity. treatments what are the mm-hmm. preventative measures what are the mitigating measures we can do. I'm interested in the science of it. I'm not interested in the political side of it uh, and all the cultural sides of it. That's all going to take care of itself. What I'm interested in, what I'm interested in as as your loyal team nerd, the nerd on your team, is the science of it. What's this mean for us? The real data. And what's actually happening back there? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tim. Well, I think that that is actually everything that we have this week. Let's hang out again next week and hopefully... Things will have been calming down a little bit. Does that sound okay with you? I'd love to. Thank right, you. Dad. And everybody be safe out there. And you don't need to hear this because you've all heard it, but I'm going to say it anyway, just because wash your hands, clean wash your, your hands. services, yeah. keep, keep some distance. Let's, let's try to stay ahead of the curve here. We're coming into where a lot of this will be shaking out in life, hopefully getting back to somewhat normal fairly quickly. So hang in there. We're in this together. Science will get us through it. I guarantee it. All right. Hang in there. Be safe and healthy. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.